G'day, Greg Miller from The Joy of Wood. I love block planes, a mighty block plane. If I only had one plane, it would be a block plane. It's an awesome thing. Just want to show you a few things about the wonderful block plane. You find that they come in different types. This one here, the number 220, has an adjuster on the back for winding the blade in and out. Some of them, some of them will have a lateral adjustment this way as well. Here's a really fancy one. This is a low angle, so the blade is on an even lower angle. And it also has an adjustable throat, so you can open and close the throat here for the different types of shavings that you want to take. The first one I ever got was very similar to this, only it was a record brand, English one, a 110, which my father gave me. I think I must have been eight or nine at the time. And I've used it all these years. It's in another toolbox at home. And, but it's just like this. Anyway, I said to my dad recently, who's in his early 90s, I said, Dad, I love this little plane, but it's a bit of a pig to adjust. And he said, yeah, that's why I gave it to you. <laughs> but it is a beautiful plane when you get used to using it. It's fantastic. So let's have a bit of a look. Okay, so to adjust the blade, to get a bit more blade in or out, You'll see these are set up, it has this little extra thickening on the back here. So if I tap on there with a hammer, what that does is that draws the blade back. It's just the same as the way the wooden planes work. So tapping on there will draw the blade back in. So there's not much sticking out there now. If I want to advance the blade, so I've got more blade hanging out, we tap the blade on the back here and bring that out. If I need to adjust it sideways, I can kick it around this way. So it's a, it's, what's great about this is it teaches you how to best adjust a plane. You notice what I'm doing here is I'm looking down there, it's on a really low angle, and it looks like two mirrors on a line across. I can actually see the blade sticking up. It's telling me to adjust it over that way a little bit. So I've got that on a reasonably fine shaving. If I want to, I can push the blade a bit further out and get a much coarser shaving. You can hear the difference. Fantastic. So looking on this really low angle, it looks like two mirrors and there's the blade across there. So that's how you adjust a plane. If I kick it around far enough, you can see it's sticking up more one side than the other. You see that? So I would adjust it back the other way so that I get it more parallel, a little bit more than that. And then of course I can, hitting on here, I can draw this back or I can hit the blade just there and advance the blade. So that's how you adjust the plane. And there it is, you can see the blade sticking up. Beautiful. So a little bit of getting used to adjusting these. That's rather different to using one of these. And the, the way you would normally adjust any plane is you hold it here and you're looking down there on that very low angle and you're adjusting it here. With a 110, you just gotta spin it around, give it the tap in or out and draw it back again and always checking this direction. Fantastic, so what I was doing at the beginning when we started, I was using my block plane to take this arras off the edge here. That arras is the sharp edge. And when we do most furniture and things, we wanna get rid of that really sharp edge on there. So I can actually make this rounded. If I take a 45 degree angle roughly, so I've got the plane on about 45 like that and then I'm going to work on that corner there and take that facet line off bring it around and take that facet line off I do enough of those and I can produce a nice round how's that that was just pretty quick and easy just that what we call a bull nose or a pencil round on that edge of course if I need to clean up an end I can use my shooting board. Now the block plane is ideal for this sort of thing, for working on the end in here. Now that, you can hear that very 
course. I got more blade for this job sticking out than I need to. And all this is little tiny pieces of end grain in here. So I might adjust the plane back a little bit so it's not quite so coarse. And away we go. Now the block plane is ideal for this. It's called a block plane because they were used for flattening off blocks, butcher's blocks and other places where you needed a block and a surface where you're working on end grain. And so that's exactly what I'm doing here on the shooting board. But it's also very useful just as a plane. So if I've got a piece of wood in here and I just need to trim this down a little bit, I can use my block plane either two-handed like this or one-handed. And one-handed works really well when you're doing taking these arises off. It's such a fantastic little plane does such a good job. So just remember if you've got the type here without the adjusters then you need a nice little hammer for this. Now when you get a lot of years of use in these you'll find tapping on the back here even though it's got that extra bit of casting it will peen over a little bit here. So when that occurs and it takes time for that to gradually develop all you need is a fine file sit it flat on there and just take that rounded off area so that's nice and flat and away we go just need to do that as a little bit of maintenance on the plane you might only ever have to do it every couple of years or whatever but that's how it works such an amazingly simple plane but a beautiful plane all of them are really good whichever version you've got and there are more but it's probably one of the most useful tools to have in the workshop. If I had a piece of timber like this one here and I wanted to shoot the end and I don't have a shooting board or it's a longer piece, I could actually come in from this end here. Let's see that one I had. I got the plane on a little bit of an angle, but I'm not going through the other side, so I'm not going to smash that off. So I'll come in from here, then I'll come around from the other side and I'll do the same thing. And I can plane that down beautifully. So if you're making a kitchen chopping board or something and you've got a nice long end to work on, just do that so you're not blowing out the other end. Come from each side, you can plane that back beautifully past all the broken fibres from the sawing. Make that really clean. There are so many useful ways that you can use the mighty block plane. Have fun planning. See you in the workshop. Cheers.